Uh, hello, fellow mystery fans. Well, we'll look at season two of Veronica Mars now continues on with Nobody Puts Baby in a Corner. So, let's take a look at it. Veronica and Duncan make out before Logan, who is now living there, walks in the door. Logan invites Kendall into the hotel room, making Duncan and Veronica uncomfortable. In a future Business Leaders of America meeting, Cassidy comes out on top of the hypothetical business contest. Key talks to new mayor Woody Goodman, who says his plan to redesign Neptune, and Woody offers to meet Keith, police chief. Logan meets Veronica in the girls' bathroom and asks her to investigate the witness to the murder of Felix Tombs, and she agrees. Duncan has searched through Mick's files and finds evidence that she was attempting to help an unknown abused child between 7 and 10 years old. Meg babies that constantly, and Veronica and Duncan will have to break into Meg's house for more evidence. The Casablanca is talked to a lawyer. Kendall has received nothing, and Dick and Beaver each have a trust fund. Veronica signs up for a babysitting job with one of the people who make ba babysat for, and Gia invites Veronica over, over to her house. At the babysitting job, the kids' parents say that they almost let May go because of Duncan. Logan appears at the door of Veronica's babysitting house. Veronica, per Veronica presents information on Logan's accuser. The boy... Edwin's dad starts acting weirdly towards Veronica and hands her a drawing Edwin made of her, showing her head cut off, of, showing her head cut off of her body. Ugh. Dick and Beaver's biological mother appears at their house. Veronica wins the babysitting job from a high-pressure teacher. However, her son is bratty and high maintenance. Veronica talks to Logan's witness, Doctor Griffith, who was a who was a plastic surgeon. Although he seems un honest at first. Veronica trails him to a cigar shop. Veronica sees all the signs of emotional abuse when she goes to Gia's house. Gia surprises Veronica with a girls' night sleepover. Logan ends his friends. Oh, Logan ends his friends with benefits relationship with Kendall. Kendall tries to tries to seduce Duncan. Ugh. Veronica meets Gia's little brother Rodney, who is extremely anxious. Veronica overhears Woody telling Rodney that he'll have to tell his mother about him spilling a cup of water on the floor, but the mother leads Ronnie to an unknown room. Dick and Beaver, drunk, ragey a sleepover. Veronica learns from Keith at the cigar shop she went to she went into was notorious for drug dealing. Logan tells Veronica that Kendall went into Duncan's room for a little while. Veronica and Duncan break into Meg's house. Duncan steals a letter without showing Veronica. Veronica figures out that Meg is actually covering for the child abuse of her sister. Veronica finds Grace Manning locked in a closet. However, Meg's dad goes in and figures out Veronica and Duncan were just breaking in for no reason. Sheriff Lem arrests Veronica and Duncan, but soon figures out that Meg's dad is the guilty one. After briefly driving away with Veronica and Duncan, he lets him go and waits menacingly outside of Meg's father's house. Dun dun dun. So anyway, let's take a look at some cultural references made in this episode. At the beginning of the episode, Veronica and Duncan are watching The Big Lebowski. Chris Pover references what a difference a day made. Veronica mentions both Twist and Shout and a famous scene from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm. Excuse me. One of the teachers quotes the song The Gambler. In an email to Wallace, Veronica quotes a famous Juliet monologue. In a voiceover, Veronica compares her letters to Wallace to Doogie Howser's journal. Dick and Beaver's biological mother quotes a lyric from You've Got a Friend. She references, I'm so excited. Veronica says that her spidey sense is tingling. Logan quotes part of the iconic line, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Spoken by Rip Butler and Gone with the Wind. Madison and Sinclair says at the party that Pretty Woman is her favorite movie. Dick and Beaver expect there to be spin the bottle at the party, and Veronica jokingly mentions Winnie the Pooh and Goodnight Moon. Now on to the arc significance of this episode. The newly discovered witness to Felix's murder is Dr. Tom Griffith, a plastic surgeon. Veronica, I mean, Logan asks Veronica to prove that Griffith is lying and, s and says that he wasn't the man on the bridge. What a Goodman tells Keith of his plan for Neptune, which involves incorporating the wealthy part of the town. <coughs> Dick and Beaver's real mother shows up to unlock their trust funds. Duncan finds the letter in the vent in Meg's room and pockets it. 
Sheriff Lamp, Sheriff Lamp hints that he was abused by his own father. That is, presumably, his reason for letting Duncan and Veronica go and then returning to the Manning residence. This also marks one of the few times that he immediately takes Veronica seriously when she reports the crime. When cuffing her, he leans forward to show that he wants to whisper something in his ear. She then tells him where to look for the secret room. Ah. And now on to the music. The following songs compare the episode. Ponderible by Rihanna, The Ant Decree by Morningwood, and Run by Air. And now finally, on to the production of this episode. This episode was written by Diane Ruggiero and directed by Nick Mark, marking Ruggiero's ninth, ninth writing credit for Veronica Mars and Mark's sixth directing credit for the show. Despite being credited, Weevil, Wallace, and Jackie do not appear and Nobody Puts Baby in a Corner. Among the episode's guest stars are, are important recurring characters, including Don Lamb, Gia Goodman, Wade Goodman, and Kendall, and Kendall Casablancas. Ritter noted that her scene in the episode was one of the favorite scenes she filmed. The episode's title refers to a famous line spoken by the character Johnny in the 1987 coming-of-age romantic drama Dirty Dancing. So overall, this is a pretty unique episode, and I do like the fact that it does move the sto some stories along, but not all of them, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Excuse me. So overall, I give Nobody Puts Baby in a Corner. Four marshmallows out of five. Well, tune in tomorrow as we take a look at Ahoy, mateys! So, until then, remember everyone, the game's afoot.